Oh, what's going on, guys? We are back with yet another video on the true stories behind some horror movies. Now, so far we've done The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yes, uh, we've done Jaws, and yesterday I believe we did The Possession slash The Dybbuk Box. And I hope you guys enjoyed those. I really, really do. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, period. Today, uh, as per a poll I did, I was using it as kind of a... Uh, I'll say a line of scheduling for which um, movies we were going to do or which types of horror movies we were going to look at next. Uh, Jaws won, and then it was the uh, Possession slash the Dybbuk Box, and then it was a tie between Ghost and Demon stuff and Haunted Dolls. I decided to go with doing Haunted Dolls next. So... I will say, moving on from here, instead of doing just Haunted Dolls as an overall, I decided to stick with one movie and probably everybody's, I will say, probably everybody's scariest movie as a kid if you're anywhere near around my age. This this movie and probably a good chunk of the series, because there's been multiple movies in this series, uh, that terrorized a generation and got us completely scared of dolls. And that is Child's Play. Yes, we are going to be talking about uh, the the true events that inspired the movie Child's Play uh, with the killer doll Chucky. Um, today's episode is going to be titled Child's Play, Robert's Tale. And the reason it's called Robert's Tale is because the true inspiration behind Child's Play from the articles I've read, from the videos I've watched, the real true inspiration for Child's Play and for Chucky comes from one of the most well-known haunted dolls uh, throughout the entire world, throughout history, if you want to say it that way, um, and that is Robert the Doll. Now, he, Robert the Doll, before we really get into it, there are multiple stories for how Robert the Doll came to be in the possession of his original owner. Um, like I said, like I said in past videos, I do research, I read articles, I watch videos, and I even sometimes will go in and look and see what people that had something to do with the movie or something to do with the true inspired story have to say about it. And from everything I found, like I just said, there are multiple stories, but especially in this case, I had to do a ton of research and mix in all the facts that were common across all the stories, because this is one of those stories that's passed down from family to family because it originated in Key West, Florida. And this is one, again, one of those stories that was passed around from family to family. So it's not definite on exactly how it came to be, but everybody and almost every story agrees that it happened this way so we're gonna i just wanted to give you guys a, a warning if you guys want to do your own research and come up with your own theory or choose something a different story to believe on this that's totally fine uh it's definitely open to interpretation but yes uh, it was inspired by the true life events child's play was inspired by the true life events in the life of Robert Eugene Otto, or as he liked to be called, Eugene. He didn't like to go by Robert. Um, it all starts, again, in Key West, Florida, where he was given a doll by his grandfather at the age of eight after his grandfather visited Germany. This, this one is the one that's held in a lot of the um, stories as to be how it actually originated. At the very end of the article, I have another short version of how the doll originated and came to be. And we'll again, we'll get to that at the very end, but for now, we're going to stick with this. Um, so yes, he, uh, his grandfather went on a trip to Germany, went to visit Germany, and bought him Robert the doll. Uh, and whether you... And a lot of this stuff I read, uh, Robert the doll... He pretty much just looked like a doll in a sailor outfit. Whether And a, a lot of the stories say that those clothes were made specifically for him. They might have been something that uh, Eugene put on him that was his own. Like maybe a costume or something like that. Uh, but moving on. Um, Eugene named the doll Robert. Gave it his own first name. Uh, at first glance, he seemed like any stuffed doll. Uh, that was dressed up in a sailor outfit holding a dog 
or holding his dog. And this is how he's displayed now in a museum, and we'll get to that later in the article. He's described as a doll dressed up in a worn-out sailor outfit, holding his dog and bearing many marks that look like scars. That's how he looks now. How he looked back then, I'm not 100% sure. Um, because all I've seen is pictures of him now. Um, according to stories, Robert the doll is responsible for divorce, death, illness, and many other woes that those who have seen him or been around him have endured. Uh, that includes car accidents, just freak accidents, weird things happening. Um, and Robert the Haunted Doll is well known for being more than a little spooky, but in the beginning, things seemed a little bit more innocent, like any other childhood friendship between a boy and his toy now what you got to remember is uh eugene uh, this was his doll he was eight years old he got it for, as a gift from his grandfather he took it everywhere with him um which with, with most kids especially boys um when we're kids when we get a new toy we take it everywhere with us either until it breaks or until we get bored or tired with it so, and, and it, it's weird. I know girls do it too, but boys, like you get us an action figure, you get us a sword, a toy gun, even a stick that we really like. We'll take it with us everywhere. We'll throw fits if we can't take it with us. That's just how little boys are. But he, he would take Robert everywhere with him, Eugene would, and he would often be heard whispering to him, which was entirely normal. Um... Until people, uh, I don't know, and in, some of these articles weren't really clear on this, but it, it's been said that he would talk, Eugene would talk to Robert and a deep voice would answer back sometimes. Um, now, whether that was heard just by the family or whether that was just heard by Eugene, I am not 100% sure because, again, the stories in the articles didn't really say. They just said that he would answer back in a deep voice. Um, and over the years, the story gets stranger and stranger. Robert had uh, was said to have somewhat of a hold over Eugene, and loud, violent commotions could be heard coming from Eugene's bedroom on an almost nightly basis. Uh, furniture uh, would be found overturned, toys were found ripped apart and just broken. His room would be trashed, and when his family, his his mom, dad, his aunt would go up to the bedroom they would see eugene huddled in his bed terrified and petrified and when they would ask what happened the only response he would have is robert did it and at one point due to robert's activities an aunt of eugene's banished him to the to the family attic in their house okay uh it, 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 they lived in a large house and the aunt banished it banished robert to the attic and that same night, that aunt died. And that, to me, is just a little creepy. That would set off a lot of red flags in my head. She put the doll up there. Now Robert wants revenge. And so now the aunt's dead. Uh, workers who helped take care of the home would quit work to never return due to activity still going on. So even if he was up in the attic, activity was still going on. People were terrified. They knew there was some bad juju about it. And the family claimed to still hear Robert moving around and his footsteps could, uh, would be heard in completely empty parts of the property. And they would even hear him giggling in the middle of the night. Now, if it's the middle of the night, unless they're getting up out of bed going and checking the attic to see if it's actually Robert, it very well could have been Eugene playing with him or talking to him or something like that, but they, they would still hear him giggling. And to me, that's creepy. Uh, right now, in my home, I think I have two or three probably four-foot-tall dolls that my mom collected that I'm holding for her as like storage. And they creep me out. I keep them in a closet. I keep stuff on top of them so they can't get out. Um, I've never been a fan of dolls. I think they are creepy in general. Uh, but moving on. Eventually, uh, Eugene got married to a woman named Annette. Named Annette. Um, and even though he was married to her, he kept the doll with him his entire life until 1974. So Robert and Eugene were never separated pretty much from the moment he was given him, other than when he was banished to the attic. 
uh, Eugene would keep Robert propped up in the window of his living room, I believe it was, in his home. And school kids would tell stories of seeing Robert move in and out of view right before their eyes, and people would avoid Eugene's house just so they didn't have to see Robert. Uh, it was even said that he would wear some certain type of smirk and he could go from being happy to angry to sad to pissed, whatever, uh, in the blink of an eye and then back. Uh, there's many, many reports and many cases of people saying that they've seen this happen. And that again, one reason why I don't like dolls, because they're freaking creepy. Um, after some time, Annette, who really, really detested Robert, banished him to their attic. But shortly after, because Eugene was married to Annette and he loved her, Robert didn't do anything to get revenge that I know of. From the articles I read, nothing was mentioned. But Eugene moved him to another room of the house that had a view of the street. I believe it was called the turret room. And spent most of his time in there painting and talking with the doll until his death. Now, I could understand how that would be a revenge on Annette saying, I'm going to take most of your husband's time. Um, and the fact that Eugene was willing to do this, even though he was married, shows that maybe there was some supernatural force going on. Because that means that instead of being there for his wife and loving her and being the appropriate type of husband he was supposed to be, he was spending most of his time with a freaking doll. Okay? And painting and talking to it, and that's a way to end a relationship. So if Robert's already been known for divorced and causing relationships to break up, here's kind of proof that it's true. Uh, whether it was supernatural or not, Eugene could have had like been a little crazy and been like, no, I love this doll, and just said, screw it. But I honestly think that there was something supernatural about the doll to make him do that. Now, after Eugene died in 1974, excuse me, um, the woman who bought Eugene's house named Myrtle Reuter was uh, Robert's caretaker following the sale of the house. Reuter corroborated many of Eugene's stories and often found Robert in an entirely different place to where she had left him. I'm going to stop right there real quick and say, when I was a teenager, uh, the apartment that my family and I lived in, it was me, my mom, my stepdad, and my youngest brother. My mom has always collected dolls. They're always baby dolls. She's had, always had a thing for cows and baby dolls. There's this one baby doll that she had that I, when I was a kid, I named Max because I've always loved the name Max. Um, and we were rearranging bedrooms one time. My mom wasn't feeling too well, so I rearranged the rooms for her. I think, I want to say I was probably like 13, 14. I was big enough to move stuff on my own so where she didn't have to do anything. She would just move the small stuff and situate the rooms you know, put up the decorations and stuff like that. I moved all the heavy stuff, put the beds together. And she forgot one of her dolls in my bedroom closet because at the time, because my stepfather was a truck driver, uh, he was gone all the time. And so she said, you know, he's gone all the time. I don't really need the big master bedroom. Why don't you take it? I said, okay, I'll take it. It's master bedroom, big walk-in closet. Of course, what teenage boy isn't going to want that? Have all his friends come over. You know, you could go hide in the closet and smoke some pot and stuff like that. You know, we did that kind of stuff. But she forgot one of her dolls in the closet. And I was setting up my room and I found it and I pulled it out of the closet. And I was like, you know, once I'm done setting this up, I'll go and she's done with her room. I'll take it to her. She could put it wherever she wants. Well, I forgot to take it to her because I set it in the corner of my room and I stuck one of my chairs in front of it. And so I totally forgot it was there. Now, I'm not saying it was supernatural, but in the middle of the night, I'm laying there trying to go to bed. I have the TV on. I think I was watching like some old episodes of House and... This might have been a little bit before House. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure when House came out. Uh, but I was watching something on the TV. It could have been a DVD. It could have been whatever. And you got to remember this was in like 1999, 2000. So I'm going to bed and I'm just... The, the noise from the TV is putting me to sleep. All of a sudden, I just hear something drag across the wall. I'm like, what the hell was that? And I open my eyes. I'm looking around and I don't see anything. 
So I lay, I lay my head back down and I start going back to bed and I hear it again. And this time it drags across the wall and ends with a thud on the floor. And I sit up in bed and I'm looking around. I'm like, what the hell was that? And this doll, not that he was heavy, but the, uh, he was like a thick type of plastic. So when he hit the floor, he was a little heavier than most dolls. You heard him hit the floor. Um, I got up and I flipped on my bedside uh, lamp and I'm like freaking out because I don't know what the hell that was. And then I start thinking, you know, it's about 11 at night. Maybe mom's still doing something in her room. And so I get up and my mom's passed out in bed. She's asleep. So it's not her. I go back in my room and no joke from behind my chair. All I see is a little bit of Max's hand. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And so I go over and he's just laying on the floor, just looking up at me freaked me out. I picked him up, walked into my mom's room, put him in her closet. I shut the door and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I put something heavy in front of the door so that it couldn't be open. And of course I was being loud because I was freaked the fuck out. And my mom says, what are you doing? And I told her, I said, dude, your doll's trying to kill me. It's freaking me the hell out. I'm leaving him here. And the next morning when we woke up, she was asking me what was going on. And I'm telling her, and she's just sitting there laughing. I said, no, no, Chucky is a real thing. It happened. This is what's going to happen. I am not going to die because of Max. All right. So I can sit here. Maybe it wasn't supernatural, but just seeing things with the dolls, hearing things like dolls that have talk boxes in them that you're not even touching and there's no motion sensor or anything on it. And all of a sudden they start talking. That kind of crap's creepy. So I understand why it would freak these people out about Robert the doll being moved from place to place or making noises or giggling. I understand why that would be freaky. Um... Visitors, going back to the story here, visitors to, uh, what was her name? Ruder. I know her name was Ruder. Myrtle. There we go. Visitors to Myrtle's new home didn't like Robert and found that he'd appear and disappear at will. Um, and she and her visitors also claimed that the already creepy expression on Robert's face appeared to change when anyone discussed Eugene in a negative way. <clears throat> in 1994, Myrtle donated Robert to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, where he still resides to this day. Two things about that real quick. <clears throat> We already talked about the weird smirk on his face and how it changes and stuff like that, but it would change when anyone discussed Eugene in a negative way. So Eugene and Robert, like we said in the very beginning, they were inseparable. They were together all the time. You could not separate them. And if Robert was and is truly haunted, and I believe he is, it's... Not too far to assume that, hey, they were best friends. This best friend is pissed off that you're talking bad about his other friend. Whether he's he's haunted or possessed by a good spirit, whether he's an, uh, an evil spirit, I still find that creepy because then you would really have to watch what you say around him, period. Um, but yes, the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida is where he is at. And even being behind glass does not stop him from doing anything. And, and another famous doll that's locked in a box behind glass that has caused drama is the Annabelle doll. If you don't know who the Annabelle doll is, it's a Raggedy Ann doll that uh, had a movie made out, uh, based off of it uh, because famous demonologists and paranormal investigators, uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren, rest in peace, Lorraine, rest in peace, Ed. Uh, I absolutely loved Ed and Lorraine Warren. I love studying their cases and reading about them and finding out more about them. Um, they did the Amityville horror case, the Enfield haunting, I believe. Um, and, and Annabelle, one of their most famous cases was about a haunted doll and they keep her locked in a glass case. Um, and people that would visit their haunted museum that would insult Annabelle. I, I believe there was one case where it was a guy and his girlfriend were on their way home and they were either on a motorcycle or in a car and they got into an accident and one or both of them died. And this was after they insulted Annabelle. So that just goes to tell me anyway that the story of Robert, just because he's locked away, does not mean that he still can't do anything. Um... And, and, and the reason, another reason for that, 
to me anyways, because um, he was being exposed to more and more people. He's locked up in a museum and people going in and out of the museum all day, every day, he's being exposed to more people. So he has the opportunity to spread his story or his legend or whatever you want to call it uh, to more and more people. Um, he even has social media accounts and they sell replica dolls of him, which I find creepy. Who would want to buy a replica? I'm sorry, a replica of a haunted doll. <sighs> How do you know he's not like putting part of his legend on? I'm just saying <laughs> on that, on the replica dolls and you know, anyway, um, it's been said that, you know, I'm going to jump down a little farther because the next part of this paragraph that I have typed up kind of ties in a little bit with the other alternate story of his origins. Staff at the museum claim that Robert has been found in different positions within his case, and the only ones that can open it are certain staff at the museum, not all staff. Um... And that footsteps have been heard around the museum at night with no apparent explanation for the noise. And that Robert's expression has been known to change from neutral to nasty in the blink of an eye. Visitors to the museum are given advice on how to approach Robert. They're to speak to him in a polite way, to ask his permission to photograph him, and to treat him with respect. I believe it was Zach Bagans, my um, old lady and... Uh, my buddy Archer, I know I talk about him a lot, but he and I talk about this stuff quite a bit. I believe it was Zach Bagans, the host of Ghost Adventures. I know I've mentioned him quite a bit. He visited the museum, and I believe he did a paranormal investigation involving Robert the Doll. And I think there was even another episode where they went to some type of haunted doll island, and he took Robert the Doll there. I could be wrong. It might not have been Robert the Doll. Don't quote me on that part that he took to... The Haunted Doll Island, you would have to do your own research. But even they thought he was absolutely creepy. Oh, excuse me. Now, again, speaking to him in a polite way, asking to photograph and treating with respect ties in with the Annabelle thing as well. If you insulted Annabelle, something horrible would happen to you. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I've been drinking a lot of water today. I've been burping all morning. Ugh. So, but to me, that also goes to show that, oh, wait, and right here, just as well, uh, staff and even visitors have uh, seen his dog outside of the case. Now, whether that's just a prank by the staff or whether that's Robert or something supernatural actually happening, I don't know. Nobody knows. Um, I really want to go and visit him one day, but the walls of Robert's display case are littered with letters from visitors apologizing for their behavior when visiting the museum. They've claimed that they've encountered dreadful misfortune, gotten into accidents, had relationship breakdowns, or even experienced death or disease in their families after visiting Robert, and these letters ask for his forgiveness. So... Obviously, it's not just a small group of people that think he, he's haunted or paranormal investigators. This is real people going in and not following the advice slash rules, if you want to call it that, of talking to him and being around him and dreadful things are happening. Um, there are over a thousand letters in total and the museum keeps and catalogs all of them for future reference. That is the end of this Robert the Doll story. A very short uh, thing about how, about the other uh, origin story. But before we do that, I am going to say, I fully believe it. And if, to me, it, it, it's formed with kind of how you believe spiritually. And I don't mean to bring religion into it or spirituality into it, but if you watch the Annabelle movie or if you follow spirituality, the way these things happen, that these dolls become possessed, is either it's a ritual done by somebody like voodoo, um, or I'll even say maybe Satanism. Don't quote me on that one because I don't know if they do stuff like that in Satanism. I don't read about it or study it. But it's either that or in the case of the Annabelle movie, whether this is how it actually happened or not, there was a girl that was killed and her essence went into the doll. So 
I guess it really just depends on how you fear, uh, feel about it spiritually and how these things come to happen. Me personally, th- I think the second story and this story kind of tie in together a little bit. And this is why. Here's the other origin story for Robert the Haunted Doll. One story for Robert the Doll's origins comes in the form of the Otto family needing help managing and taking care of their large home. It's already been said that they had help around the house, people cleaning it, taking care of it. Um, One of their servants, as they like to call them back then, ended up getting fired because she was caught doing voodoo in the home. Out of revenge, she cast a, a, a spell, a voodoo spell, whatever you want to call it, on the doll and gave it to Eugene. Now, let me go back up here to this other paragraph that I skipped. If we're to believe anything about voodoo, perhaps with the increased exposure of Robert, plus replicas of him being sold, the increased bad luck of visitors to the museum is simply due to the curse being spread further around the world. I kind of already said that, but not quite like that. Um... Now, the reason I think the stories tie together is I think she was performing voodoo. I think she got caught, she got fired, but I think Eugene already had the doll and this lady just performed a voodoo spell or ritual, whatever you want to call it on it, and then gave it back to him. I don't think he got it from her. I think she took it, did the the voodoo ritual spell, and then gave it back. Um, And I also believe that maybe because of that, and again, because he's in the museum around people all the time, I think that his curse is being spread farther and farther. Um, but there you have it, guys. That is the origin story of Chucky. That is the or the inspiration behind Child's Play. Uh, there may be other stories to what the real true inspiration was, but this one was the most common and the most widely believed to be the true inspiration for Child's Play and for Chucky. Uh, one of my best friends actually just told me last night, I don't know if I'm going to watch this video because Chucky was a fuck fuckhead. And, and he terrified me. Chucky terrified an entire generation. You guys are not alone, all right? Chucky terrified me. I hate dolls. They are creepy little things that all need to be burned. Um, I'm sorry to anybody that likes dolls. But uh, somebody else said, you know, they like the paranormal stuff. This stuff is creepy. I would rather, much rather sit here and talk about the Dybbuk boxes and possessions and Jaws than sit here and talk about dolls. Because like I said, I have two or three sitting out in one of my closets right now. And just thinking about that, any time that I think about that freaks me out. But thanks a lot, guys. Go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, IronGlaze89. And if you want, try to catch me live later on Twitch. Uh, My uh, Twitch channel is IronGlaze, I-R-O-N-G-L-A-Z-E-E. Thanks a lot, guys. I will talk to you all later. And our next episode, I don't know if it's going to be ghost and demon stuff, but I'm thinking about switching to um, some of the old original slasher films from the 70s, the 80s, and maybe some serial killers. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later.